All right, everyone, welcome back. And we are on our last problem for exam two, uh, creep, creep, creep. So let's look at the stress strain curves below. Um, below is the creep deformation mechanism map for the green curve. So we're gonna label this as purple, green, red, blue. Um, so we can tell from here that our yield strength of purple is greater than the yield strength of, um, of green which is greater than our yield strength of red, which is greater than our yield strength of blue. Um, additionally, you see that these pretty much could have all the same slopes. So let's, let's take a peek. So we have the green curve here. So this is our curve, theoretical, dislocation glide, elastic, power law creep, cobalt creep, Navarro herring. Um, Let's see, label the sections, boom, we got it. Looking at the other maps, which ones could correspond to the purple and blue curves? Fill out all sections of the, so let's go ahead and look over here. Actually, so this was our, what was it, this is green? So this was green, and we were asking if it's the purple um, and the blue curves. So let's see here. So the purple curve, when compared to the green, is gonna have a higher yield strength. So it needs to be greater than to the minus two. So that one's not gonna work. So this one could work for my purple. Um, and if I look at that regime right here, I can look at it as this one or this one. Purple, let's see. This could be, I think this could be the blue. Purple, blue, and that one maybe the red may be this one either. You can probably say this is the red. And you'd see TS, DG, TS, DG, PLC, PLC, Cobal Creep, so purple, blue, uh, Nabara Herring, Nabara Herring, uh, TS, DG, PLC, NH, Cobal Creep, um, excellent. So I think we labeled those all well and correctly. Um, boom, fill out the sections and information mechanism map. Um, for the green, purple, and blue curves, rank the yield strength, grain size, dislocation density, solute concentration based on the stretching curves and deformation mechanism maps. So you can say here that for the purple, these look like the same slope. Um, and if we're looking at how the maps are changing, the maps are changing and significantly the cobalt creep region is changing. So we can rank and say that my grain size of blue is greater than my grain size of red, which is greater than my grain size of green, which is greater than my grain size of purple. Uh, um, solute strengthening, probably going to be a, about equal. And we can rank dislocation density, perhaps, that could be also what's driving essentially this as well, uh, the same as our yield strength. So it's gonna increase, you know, the same as this one. Um, so solute will be effectively the same. Excellent. If the purple, blue, and green curves were all the same material, but were precipitate strength with different volume factors precipitate, which region the differentiation mechanism would change? Not meant, the only thing that would change would be my yield strength curve. Um, which curve would have the highest volume fraction of precipitates? That would be the purple, for sure. Then, you know, again, in decreasing order, these these all. Um, and you'd also see a change in the slope there. So you want to describe this problem very well. Um, good. Um, what would happen uh, to the maps for purple, blue, and green curves if the solute concentration changed? Again, we wouldn't see that, that significant change um, in your... Uh, Cobalt creep region because again, you're not going to change that grain size significantly, so you'd only see that. Which curve would have the highest solute and lowest solute? Again, highest solute, lowest solute. There you go. That's pretty much all we've got for this. Again, I feel like this exam is a little bit, um, a little bit straightforward. And again, we can kind of explain again why does cobalt creep eventually out be out competed by Navarro herring? It's just because we're moving along those grain boundaries. So, but anyways. We'll see you in the next exam uh, and in the next actually set of lectures with electrochemistry and polymers. See you then. Thanks. Bye.